So welcome to the first part of this um, facial tracking series with Inside Nuke. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start to have a look at how we can prepare our footage ready for tracking. So what I've done is I provided you with a uh, video file, a .mov. This .mov is um, 564 frames long. It's basically a video of someone turning their head from side to side. I've selected the frames 160 to 400 because I think that's the, there's good movement in there, enough movement back and forth. Okay, so I, I think that's going to be a, a good area to work with. So what I've done first of all is I've exported this as a image sequence because you, you don't want to be working with a mob. It'll, it can give you errors and it, it just becomes troublesome. Um, so I've just put a right node down here and I've selected where I want to save my footage to. Um, so and then I've saved it as a JPEG, okay, because you don't need anything more than JPEG. This is just reference for us for tracking, okay, and it's got enough detail in there. I turned the quality all the way up to one, but that, that's it. If you don't know how to render within Nuke, please check out my rendering in Nuke tutorial. It'll show you how to use this write node and how to write out a sequence. Um, but yeah, just I called mine face, saved it in a file called face footage, face underscore footage underscore four hashtags to give it the number of the frame and then dot jpeg okay so once you've exported out your footage you'll have now a jpeg sequence an image sequence and it should be frame range 160 to 400 if you've gone with the same frame range as i have um, so yeah that's what we're working with frame 160 to 400 which is great so we've got it as, an, as a jpeg sequence now if we take a look at the footage uh, go through the red green and blue channel blue channel is probably the best for this um, have a look at a static area, not a moving area, because it's easy to see. If you play through, you'll see that there is actually some digital noise within here. And this is unavoidable. You, however well you light it and however low your ISO is, you'll always have some sort of digital noise. Um, if we want to be tracking the face, I would like to remove some of that noise, but you've got to be careful that you don't remove too much, okay? Um, because otherwise all, all the features will disappear, and I'll show you that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a denoise node. Okay, slide this in there. Make sure your source is the source pipe is plugged into your footage, and you'll see it's got this little um, notice along the top. The noise input has changed. Move the analysis region to analyze noise, or press lock noise analysis. Basically, what that means is we've got to move this into a suitable area. I'll give you a box, and I'm going to move this into a suitable area. I would go for my neck by there but what I won't do is I won't go on the face because it'll start removing the actual whiskers which are ac actual nice detail we could track so if I denoise this uh, disable this node sorry you can see that it's actually taken out quite a bit too much there it's getting rid of some of the blemishes and some of the whiskers which are going to be nice to track what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this just to a sort of area by here um, I think that'll do, or maybe maybe the sort of shoulder area will do by here. Yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, and it's still, obviously, if we disable it, it's still doing it too much. So coming over to the node properties, our source is digital because this was recorded on uh, a sensor rather than film. Um, mod you can leave noise modulus modulated and leave all this. I'm just going to come to the denoise amount, and basically I'm going to take this, let's turn my node back on, I'm going to take this down to round about I think it's on one so looking at the blue channel which tends to be the noisiest I'm gonna take this around I think I'm gonna try 0.3 so if I pop out of the um, if I pop out of the blue channel I'm now going to disable this node and zoom in yeah we're losing a little bit of noise but we're still managing to keep some of the detail or quite a bit of the detail and it really is a balancing act we could have probably tracked this with the noise but it is nice to re remove some of it as well okay um so you could probably even I wonder if you could how, how far can you increase that i wouldn't put it up to one because again you can see that's a lot of detail being lost there so again it's a balancing act and i think i'm going to come 0.35 that seems to be that seems to be working well again let's have a look at the blue channel and yeah, you can see it's removed a lot of noise from the blue channel. Um, but it's also managed to keep a fair amount of detail. Okay, and we'll have a look at ways of bringing that detail back in as well. So what I then did is I went ahead and I actually wrote out this footage. Okay, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you loads of different ways. And you don't have to do each of these ways to prepare your footage for tracking. You could probably just track it from now, to be honest. But I want to show you different ways and how you can make this process easier. 
So what I did is I wrote this out, so I put another right node below, uh, slotted it in, and I just wrote this out as a denoised version. You can see I've got this read node, read 3, is called denoised face footage. Okay, so we'll come down, and yeah, this is what we've got. I've got my denoised face footage. Okay, so we've changed it from a MOV, we've put it into a JPEG sequence, and we denoised that. Um, just only for tracking purposes, just to make it a bit clear. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to create a high pass. So if we jump between this and this, you can see that this high pass which I've created is actually um, bringing out a lot more of this detail, okay? And this can, high passes can be really helpful with tracking. So I'm going to show you how to create one of them. First of all, let's just view our footage. Here we are. Uh, let's view our footage and we are going to create a, not a commonly used node to be honest, but we're going to create a lapation node, okay, and plug that in. And you'll see what it's doing, okay. Basically what it's doing is it's blurring the image and then it's minusing that. So I'm going to illustrate that very quickly. If I just quick, quickly create a blur node and a merge node, A over B, and increase this blur. You don't have to follow me along with this. But if we just view the merge, changes to minus. This is what it's doing, okay. And it's, 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 it looks a bit different because my blur is higher. So if I bring down my blur, you'll see it affect it less. Basically, this Laplacian node is blurring the image, okay? So blurring by ever how much, and then it's minusing A, so it's minusing the blurred from this to get almost like a bit of a difference between them, okay? Um, and, and that's what it's doing. So I'm gonna delete them, but you can just do that simply with the Laplacian node. Not a commonly used node, but um, there you go, that's what it does. And you can increase the size of this and just to bring out kind of more detail, all right? Uh, what you'll want to do then is you'll want to plus this back on top of the footage. So if we get a merge node, A and B, okay, zoom in, A and B, what you're going to do is you're going to plus this on top. So come into our merge and change our merge to plus. And let's view that merge. And if we go between the two, you can see it's bringing in some of that detail. And you can alter how much detail by turning this lap nation, bleh, lap nation node up and down, okay? And it'll bring in more detail. So that, that's that's one one way. So that's called a high pass. It's, it's using a high pass filter, okay? Um, you could sim you could chuck a sharpen node on there, um, but I just find that this way works a lot better. So for example, sharpen, chuck a sharpen node, um, again, there's a lot of kind of, conf not confusing, but there's a lot of different um, dials in here. I just prefer using using the way I did. It is up to you. You could use a sharpened node, but um, yeah. I, w I, would, I would be careful of how much you push this, by the way, as well. Just, just be mindful. What I did then is, again, I got my right node, and I wrote out a new sequence. Uh, again, so this is called face footage high pass. So we've changed it into an image sequence, denoised it, brought back some um, detail that we, you know, brought out some more detail. I then wrote that out again. And the next thing that you can do, again, you don't have to do all of these, but these are just different ways that you can. Create a color correct node, so we can kind of color correct it. We can bring up some contrast, we can increase the contrast, maybe gamma down and gain up a little bit, just to increase some contrast. And you can see just by doing that, Again, it's bringing out even more detail. You could do this color correct before the lapilation, if before this, if you want. So if I get this color correct node, again, I've never done it that way, but you can have a, have a play around and see how it looks. So if I view my thing over here now and just disable this, it may help, I don't know. Um, but yeah, give it a go, and just these are just different methods for you to use. So color correct. That that kind of that really helps bring out some more detail. You can see just by disabling it, got some more features bringing out. And it's bringing out all the dark circles under the eyes. Um, the final one is if you were to write that out, then um, you you can. I didn't write it out because, to be honest, it was I didn't want to write out loads of sequences. But there's a further thing you can do when it comes to tracking. Um, if we view our high pass footage over here. Um, you can look at individual channels, okay, and if we cycle through red, green, and blue, well, when I come to do the 
user tracks, the manual tracks, I want to be tracking these little blue bits. And blue on the sort of orangey skin, yeah, that, that, that's got quite good contrast. But if we come to the red channel, there's so much more contrast in the red channel. So when I come to do the manual tracking, I'm going to be using the red cha red channel for that. When it comes to the um, doing the auto tracks for the face, um, possibly the green channel. I want to see where there's the most contrast. It may be the green. Yeah, I think the green channel possibly for that. Or the red, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, what you can do to, if you want to track one of them is create a shuffle node. Shuffle, drag it in, and over in here, if we want to, for example, just output the red channel, what you can do is RGB red, and then put RGB red into green, RGB red into blue, and what that'll do is it'll take your red channel, instead of, if we view the footage, instead of having to have to click R to view the red channel, you can stay in RGB, and with this shuffle node, and it's just putting the red into everything into red, green, and blue. So when we view the red, green, and blue, it is actually just the red channel being outputted into each one of them. Okay, so if you double click that, you can come into node and you can label it. So if we click red, you can now see that this shuffle node is labeled red channel. You can then copy this, come in, and let's do, do the green. So I put the green to the RGB. Okay, if we view this shuffle five now, it'll be outputting the green channel to the RGB, and let's rename that, green, and finally, we can do the same again, so come to this one, and then output the blue for the red, green, and the blue, and what you've got then is you've got the blue channel outputted, and let's just quickly rename that, blue. Okay, so basically those are different methods of um, preparing your footage ready for tracking. So we've come from a MOV sequence, we've then made it into a JPEG sequence, which is going to work a lot better with the software. We've denoised it, but then we've brought some detail back in with a high pass filter, and then we've used some color correction, and you could write out the color correction and then bring it into the channels, but you know, it's what works for your piece of footage. I'm probably not going to um, output the color correct because it did add some stuff, but I just didn't feel it added a great deal. I don't know. Possibly I'll have a think about it. I'll analyze it before the next tutorial. So cheers for that. Um, cheers for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next lesson in this facial tracking series.